Welcome to another Headless Professor video. This one on the margin of error and confidence interval estimates. We're going to use margin of error when we have a sample that is being used to estimate a population mean. What the margin of error tells you is how far off your estimate is likely to be, how much confidence you can have in your estimate. Here's what you need to calculate margin of error and a confidence interval. You need to have your sample size, n, the sample mean that you have calculated, the standard deviation, preferably of the population, a z-score for our level of confidence. Now usually we use the .05 level of confidence. In other words, we're 95 percent confident that the value lies within the margin of error. And the z-score that corresponds for a two-tail 95 percent confidence interval is 1.96. We could also use a 90 percent confidence interval, a 99 percent confidence interval, or a 99.9 .9 percent confidence interval. But usually the 95 percent confidence interval is used. So usually the z-score you're going to be using is 1.96. Here's how to calculate. We take the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. This gives us what is known as the standard error. The margin of error is simply going to be the standard error times the z-score. An example would be we have a sample size of 49, a mean of 78, a standard deviation of 5, and a z-score of 1.96 for a 95% uh, confidence interval. We take the square root of our sample size. The square root of 49 is 7. We divide our standard deviation by the sample size, 5 divided by 7, and that yields 0 0.714. That is our standard error. We then take the standard error times Rz. In other words, 0 0.714 times 1.96. That's our margin of error, 1.40. In other words, 95% of the time, the population mean will be within 1.40 of the mean. Our confidence interval is simply the range of scores between a low of mean minus the margin of error to a high of mean plus margin of error. So here it would be 78 minus 1.40 is 78 plus 1.40. So our margin of error would be between, uh, give us a confidence interval between 76.6 to 79.4. Now to get a narrower margin of error and a narrower confidence interval, we could do this in three ways. If we had a lower standard deviation, that would help, but that's not likely to uh, be within our power of control. A second possibility is to accept a lower level of confidence, perhaps a 90% level instead of a 95% level. Perhaps the best solution is to get a larger sample size. To get a better level of confidence, in other words, a 99% instead of a 95%, once again, we could achieve this with a lower standard deviation.
but that's usually not something under our control. We could accept a broader confidence interval. In other words, we could go out further, say between 75 and 80. Or, the best solution is usually get a larger sample size to begin with. We're going to have to use a T instead of Z in many cases when the population standard deviation is not known and all we really have is a sample standard deviation to use as an estimate. In this situation we would use the T table and we have to use the row the DF row of n minus 1. This has been another Headless Professor video, this one on margin of error and confidence interval estimates. Create your very own video podcast from PowerPoint. Log on to authorstream.com. It's absolutely free.